Blah, 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 blah. Hello. Hello, how is it going? How do you do? I do. I'm doing very well myself. I hope you're having a good Sunday. I figured I'd try to, you know, get in a little bit of um, some Caves of Cud. This is a great game. Played it for a brief little bit yesterday um, during the stream, but wound up playing Outward with Alan, which is great. That Outward is definitely something. Well, we're now we're playing. This is, this is a rogue. This is a roguelike. So we're back on to the rogathon. So what is Caves of Cud? Caves of Cud. I'm. I'm I've already made my character. I should have probably. I, I should have probably went over that as well. But um. Eh. Eh. I can show you what. What I can give you details on the next caves. I'm sure this character will not be alive for very long. So. What is what is Caves of Cut? Caves of Cut is a. Let me make sure my game title is correct too. Yeah, it's not. Caves of Cut is a rogue like. So it is a turn based kind of kind of um, man, I don't know. Turn based. How the hell do you describe this game? Turn-based, uh, kind of top-down, uh, sprite-based, kind of like a RPG. You know, it's kind of one of those games where very open, very challenging. The game doesn't really hold your hand too much, even though Caves of Cut is a little different than other roguelikes, and the fact that it does in fact have a main storyline that you could do if you want to, if in case you do need a little bit of like, you know, hand-holding to make sure. To give you some some purpose but you'll see our ui um oh this is like just the opening paragraph when you like spawn in uh we'll read that in a second but over here on the left is kind of like the output this is like where the game tells you everything that's happening because it's turn-based and it's like uh i don't know is this a sprite i think this is a sprite i think that's what these are called but visually i think this is one of the more interesting looking roguelikes but still visually compared to what you might expect, say like Binding of Isaac or other rogue lights, um, this one's mostly gonna be in your imagination. This one does a good job of having some effects to help you with that, but mostly it's just gonna be us doing things and, uh, you know, describing them and reading them through the, the terminal. Sounds strange, I know, but it's great, trust me. It's really great. Uh, so, uh, the quick UI, well, let me read this first. This is the first paragraph you get when you spawn in, uh, generating the world and stuff. Everything's random except the settlement locations, like Joppa, which is a town we're in, is always in the same spot on every map, but everything else is random. And when I say everything, I literally mean everything. The relationships of the factions, and there are a lot of factions, um, are randomized. All kinds of stuff. The history, the lore, the... Like the last like the 50 to 200 years or something crazy like that is generated every time you start a character. And of course, the loot, the loot is random every time. But let's read this opening paragraph. On the 8th of Ayer Ut, you arrive at the oasis hamlet of Joppa along the far rim of Magrayi, the great salt desert. All around you, moisture farmers tend to groves of viridian water vine. There are huts wrought from rock salt and brine stalk on the horizon cuds jungles strangle chrome steeples and rusted archways to the earth further and beyond the fabled spindle rise above rises above the fray and pierces the cloud ribbon sky wow beautiful so this is like kind of um like to explain it to maybe give a more modern kind of like a relationship to it things don't happen in this game it's all turn-based. So when I move, like say that, that was a turn, and then everyone else, every other entity 
on the map and maybe even throughout the world I'm not sure about that takes their turn to probably not the whole world mostly just what you can see um, so it's turn-based it's kind of tactical it's very tactical because this game is very unforgiving but so let's do let me let me give you a quick rundown real quick of what the the HUD what are you looking at in the top left here we have the character that's my sprite that's my name Kajur there's my HP and my level 1 and the experience I need to get to level 2. And then, of course, we already talked about the box. And then going across from staying at the top, going to kind of the middle, you have, I guess, like our... I don't know what this is, actually. Is this like coordinates or something? 25 degrees? Is that the temperature? Oh, it's the temperature. Yeah, it says T. So 25 degrees. Uh, it doesn't say Fahrenheit or Celsius, but... This is our status. You have to eat and drink. So we are sated and quenched right now. You do have to eat and drink, and I'll get to more on that later. And then, of course, this I this must be our money and our weight, our capacity. And I never pay attention to this. This is pretty handy. I need to pay attention to that more. Um, I don't know what this is. I don't know what that is. Mental save. Mental save 50. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. QN, no idea. Armor value, AV, is our 2, our dodge value is 3, and our mental armor is 8. And then finally, if we go to the top right, we have uh, the, this, this is just like, tells time of day and month. The harvest dawn, 628, the 8th of Ayer Ut in Japa, and a little time here to show you the passage of time. Directly below that, these are some buttons that you can press to do some stuff. Like go to the overworld map, or go back down do some others it's not too important at the bottom we just have like some of our abilities this is kind of like where you can quickly access uh some of your abilities but uh you know you could always go to the menu so eating and drinking specifically drinking case of cut takes place in a if i'm remembering correctly it's certainly sometime after an apocalypse or something like that the wasteland the uh, the world is very different than what it was before whatever whatever happened i'm still i'm still catching up a little myself i'm still pretty new to this game uh to be honest but i've been enjoying the heck out of it you know mutants it's like everyone's mutated normal humans are kind of a rare sight they either have you know four limbs or two heads or or things like that, or they have Esper powers, and or they're by they're they're like uh, cyborgs and stuff. But more on that sometime in the future. But uh, clean water has become a scarcity. So in this game, your money is literally water, and it's measured in uh, drams of water. In fact, and I don't. Yeah, so right here. So 32 drams of fresh water, which essentially equates to having like 64 bucks. So, you know, you drink it and you use it for a trade as currency and stuff. So, and it's heavy. You know, water's heavy. So it kind of adds to your, like, med managing your, your weight and stuff. But anyway, um, you know, you got inventory, all the typical RPG stuff. This is my character that I made that I accidentally skipped showing you guys the character creation process but these are my stats they all do stuff manage things this guy is an esper so he's kind of like a, a wizard um a mage if you will and these are my mutations i have a beak which gives me plus one ego and i occasionally peck at my opponents and i get plus two in a reputation with birds wow uh this is modded too uh i'll have to get a list of the mods but this is not base game I do have mods. I've got some rough scales, which increase my armor value and acid resistance and my reputation with unshelled reptiles. I'll tell you, there are a ton of factions. I took a defect to have a snake tail, which means, you know, I have no feet and a large muscular tail. My move speed is reduced by half and I can constrict my enemies to apply damage and hold them in place. I cannot wear shoes because, you know, I ain't got no feet. And then I took some starting uh, mage powers, you know, so clairvoyance, which gives me Temporary vision of a nearby area. And due to my my ego, 
I have uh, increased these already. But uh, none of this point. Sundermine is, you know, our offensive spell of choice. You sunder the mind of enemy, leaving them reeling in pain. So essentially, I like lock onto someone for three turns, and if I do nothing but essentially pass those three turns, they take incrementing damage, and then like a big, big boom of damage at the uh, at the end of those three turns. Teleportation, pretty self. Explain it to a temporal, temporal fugue. This one's interesting. You quickly pass back and forth through time, creating multiple copies of yourself. And those copies have your equipment and your your skills. So, like, I can make a copy of... I think at level one it says I make one copy. That one copy has, you know, Sundermind. He has a snake tail. He has all that stuff. And, uh, so, so, I mean... You can see we're, we're trying some real whiz-biz here. You know what I'm saying? And we're trying to get some whiz-biz going. Uh, you have skills. Every time you level up, you get skill points. And there's, like, a whole bunch of them. Uh, this game does allow mouse input, but I find it much more comfortable to use, um, arrows, keys, and the numpad, and kind of like the keyboard. This is a game you don't need a mouse to play. It's, this is kind of like what it makes it a roguelike, one of those things. You know, you move around with the arrow keys or numpad, uh, and various other things like that. But you have a bunch of skills that cost SP, skill points when you level up, and they have skills underneath them that have various requirements to do various things. So... Without further ado, you know, let's uh, get into this. Um, this is the kind of... Joppa is kind of like the beginning starter town. It's recommended for new players. And uh, that's because it's kind of like the easiest place. First thing you need to do, and I'll just go and tell you, is you go in these houses, close the door behind you, and you steal from these people. They don't care about anything. Or at least, they do care. But they're not going to try too hard to, to stop you if you close the door. Uh, so in this chest, we found some bright light bronze gauntlets. You see that little blue diamond is armor value, and the little empty circle is dodge value. So this, these light bronze gauntlets are going to increase our dodge value by one. So I'm going to go ahead and equip those. And I don't really care about bows. Or maybe I should, because I'm kind of a scrawny boy. Um, and I probably need to stick to range attacks. Okay, look. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff. A lacquered bronze dagger. A crudely constructed bronze knife. This item repels liquids and cannot rust. Oh, that's pretty helpful. That's kind of nice. 16 drams of honey. Uh, another thing is, since we're this post-like, technologically advanced civilization, you can find artifacts which uh, you can examine to try and figure out what they are. And these artifacts can range from anything from... A lightsaber to a box of crayons to a a missile rack to a folding chair stuff like that all kinds of stuff and so you and that's based off your intelligence your chance to examine those uh, so we're in Joppa what do we do well this is a big game you can literally go anywhere and do anything that's kind of like the that's how these always want. You, you make the adventure yourself. There is a storyline, but you don't have to follow it. But if you wanted to, and you're in Joppa, and this is your first time playing, you could talk to this guy, Mimit. And you could, you know, hey, look, I'm in search of work. Some critters are eating our water vine. Farouk claims he saw one slinking around a vine patch. Ugly little thing, he says. Pale white, eight legs, and ear-splitting wine. I noticed a bit of red dirt in the water vine pool. The same way we find uh, the same we find in the soil at a nearby cave to the north we call Red Rock. Travel to Red Rock and kill as many of these critters as you can. Bring back the corpse of one too. Reward your efforts. Uh so yeah, sure, I'll do this. I mean I don't have to, but I can if I want to. These two NPCs are from a mod, a tutorial mod. Uh she kinda gives you quests to kind of explain the story to you if this is your first time playing, but I'm obviously not going to bore you guys with that. Uh, I'm slightly experienced. I've got, you know, maybe like... Maybe about 10 hours in this game. You know, trying stuff. Um, but if you're looking for direction this game, you can talk to Mimit, and then you can go over here. 
And you can talk to this guy. My tensile strength of a Reblon, but lacking in dino elasticity. Retro threading in the embed, probably. Oh, I didn't notice you there. That's because I was ignoring you. Noting a trace, you were a synthetic line seed solvent. Hmm? An unexpected deviation from the clank constant. <clears throat> must you must you disturb me? What are you? Some sort of treasure hunter? At the very least, make yourself useful and bring me back a knickknack from one of the caves I may have watched. Where can I find such a cave? There are caves everywhere, you don't. This is crud. Try the rust wells, just east of here. I will return with your knickknack. And because I have two artifacts, that's what he means by knickknack. That's what he's talking about. Uh, I already have those, so I could give them to him. But I'm not going to do that yet, just yet, because I want to identify them first and see if they're worthwhile. But you can talk, to, if this is your first time playing, you can talk to those two individuals and they'll give you some sort of direction. See, so you can hit Q at any time to look at your quest. So let's do, um... Oh, there's also a third person you can talk to for a quest before I forget, but it's not recommended for a new player. Where's the, where's she at? Usually always running around. We gotta find her. Where'd she go? Usually start by her and she's like screaming about pilgrims and stuff. Where's she at? Where, 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 where'd she go? Alright, let's see if I can find her. So at any time you can hit O on your, your numpad and your character will auto explore. Nope, oh, they found her. And it'll go to any interest, interesting spots and pick up anything until the map is entirely explored. This lady. Wanderer, orphan of the salt, hear me. To the north and the west, through the great salt desert, the six day still splits the earth in two. Seek there the grandeur of Shekinah, first among fathers. Release yourself from the burden that chrome bears on your sickly flesh. So she's pretty much giving you a quest to go to this location on the map. And you know, maybe we'll talk to her later. I'm just going to go ahead and take your quest. Because, uh, you know, another tip you guys can do. This guy's the vendor, by the way. Yeah. So, like, if we don't care about any of this stuff. I can't wear shoes, so I'm going to sell these shoes. This is my inventory. On the left is his inventory. Those iron gauntlets are kind of nice. Let's see, what do we not care about? Uh, we don't care about this. We might keep that bow. The nugget is just for pure selling. And this honey. I don't really care about this honey either. I'll probably sell it. Is there anything I want? So I have $64, and I'm offering him 28.69 drams worth of value, which is essentially about $28. And you can see over here the values on the left side of the screen. He has these numeric values. You just kind of look like... A dram, one dram is a buck. That's essentially what it is. And the thing is, one of the things you have to manage is water is heavy, so you don't necessarily want to be carrying all this water around because it's 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 very very heavy. So let's see. What does he have? Anything interesting that we want? He has a steel club. That's a two d two. That's pretty nice. Because uh, I think I'll show you in a second, but I'm pretty sure that. The class I chose, Pilgrim class, quote unquote, starts off with just a stick, a staff, <laughs> which doesn't do anything. These are artifacts that you could buy from to try and identify. And then, of course, armor. And then these are, uh, you know, ammunition for missile weapons, arrows, slugs, and what have you. You know, that's normal stuff. I think. Do I, is there anything that I really want here? And just taking a quick look. I always like to take a quick look. This weird artifact is much more expensive than the others. If I got either of these, it would leave me $20 shorter, give or take. Leaving me with only 40 water. I've never actually ran out of water in my limited experience playing this game. So, I don't know like what's really reasonably like a safe amount to keep but I always tend to err on the side of safety because fresh water is incredibly rare so you know what? I'll probably just you know hit O and he'll have to pony up 28 drams of fresh water to even this trade because he doesn't have anything that really too interesting but let me let's take a look at our equipment if I hit E 
And this is the things that I have equipped. I have a cloth robe. I have my beak because I have that mutation. I have an engraved staff. If we look at this, you can see it does 1d2 damage. This is early in six... And this is a, a sturdy staff of brine stock. It's engraved with a scene from the life of the ancient Sultan Muxerse. Muxerse? Early in 6215 BR, before... I don't know what BR means, to be honest. I, I'm still learning the lore. I'm not too familiar. You don't even have to pay attention to the lore, obviously, when you play this game. But it seems like it's pretty interesting. After several tumultuous years, the Sultan of Cud disappeared. Because of Muxerse's reputation for hoarding stars in a bottle, he was chosen as his successor. And, you know, sometimes you know your hobbies pay off. Plus 60% representation with the Muxerse house. Now, if I understand correctly, that means while I wield this, I have plus 60 reputation... Repu I can't speak. Plus 60 reputation with this faction. I don't know if that's worth it or not. Um, I'm probably... Probably, it might sell for a little bit more. It's fine enough, probably. I've got a big snake tail that I can constrict with. These are my abilities. I did not mean to do that. Um, these are the abilities I know. I already talked about them. I, so I have meditate, staunch wounds, all kinds of stuff. So, that lady. Oh, and like, uh, another thing about lore is like, you can look at these statues too, and they'll be added. Shrine to Reshep, the last sultan. The shrine depicts a significant event from the life of ancient Sultan Reshep. In 3 AR, Reshep cleansed the marshlands of the plagues of the Gyre and taught Abram to sow watervine along its fertile tracks. Wow. Wonderful. What a good guy. So where does that pilgrim lady want us to go? She literally wants us to go right here. So you can... And that's, that's quite a distance. But you can actually travel on this overworld map. Like, I just traveled. I left Joppa and I'm over here now. And it's kind of like... It's, it's not like quick travel necessarily, but... It certainly makes it quicker than going through screens. Uh, so here's something you can do if you... Let me zoom in on where I'm at. Uh, so I left Joppa. I'm literally one screen or so to the, to the left of it. There's a useful skill called Wayfaring. And mine's Compass. Doubles the chance of regaining your bearings when you are lost. Reduces the chance of getting lost by about 15%. You travel on the overland map twice as quickly. So here's something you do. If you take Wayfaring early, which is comes with the Pilgrim class, you can talk to that lady, the, the lady we talked, and we can try to run for this place real quick. We just try to like line it up so I have to go one more. And this is how you can get some pretty quick levels. It's just a tip. You don't have to do this. There, There's red rock and like the red rock right here and the copper the copper mines or whatever these are called. Are great places for early, early levelers. Early levels to level up. But I'm going to try and like skip that. And I'm going to try and sprint... I got lost. I was trying to sprint all the way up there and I got lost. Sometimes this happens. So it's going to zoom me in and now I have to kind of move around for some some places until I can find my bearings again and I can travel on the overworld map. So you just kind of like just push, just go through some screen, screens as quickly as possible. Oh, and I'm hungry. You can say up there I'm hungry. So... Uh, eating is very important in this game, especially once you get the cooking skill, because you can combine things to give you various benefits. I do not have those, so I have to just whip up a meal that doesn't do anything for me. I gather some fixings. A dash of salt kraken larvae, some Issachari nomad hair, a declared apricot, and a hunk of cheese. Okay. <laughs> what is a declared apricot? And why am I eating hair? You know what? To each their own. I eat the meal and I'm fine. But we have to keep going through these screens until I can I get my bearings again. And that could take... Oh god. Oh god. I wasn't paying attention. This is bad. Oh jeez. What is this? Okay. So you can press L 
to go into like a look mode. We can look at these things. Okay, this is a glow white cultist of Agolgut. Agolgut. Beneath the umbra of a stinking robe, flesh smears over the bones of a girl who surrenders her body to the metamorphic Numen. Physical creature, physical features, bloody claws, bloody claws, equipped carnivorous mom. Uh, so, this is a description, and in the, um, the, this is their health. This describes, like, how healthy they are. Once you get, uh, you can see this will go from, like, perfect to fine to injured to wounded and then stuff like that, blah. This, to the, this tough descriptor shows, it's kind of like a CR for D&D. &D. Um, there goes from weak. What's the lowest level? I forget. Trivial, weak, average. An average enemy is something that will give you a challenge 1v1. So it's like if you have two at, two things of average challenge rating fighting you, you need to be like on your toes and try to like, you know, get away from them. Then it's tough and then possibly something and then it's impossible. So these guys are more than a match. This will be a challenging fight for me, even more so than usual. And then of course it gives its disposition towards you. These two are hostile and it looks like we've got two of them. Okay, so not a problem. It's turn based. They've already slapped me once. The glow white. I might have to turn the music down just a little bit. The music's really good in this game, I think. But let me turn it down. Just a little bit. Especially the salt dunes music. They start they start going to ham on those bongos or whatever. Okay, maybe that's a little bit better. Hey, let me turn it down. Yeah, that's probably good. Yeah. <laughs> Not a problem. The glow white cultist of Agla critically hits you one time for six damage with her bloody claws. Okay, so that's always a good start. It's... She hit me for two times for five damage with her bloody claws, and now I'm bleeding. And I'm, I'm taking one damage for me. Okay, so. Not good. What we should probably do... Because it's turn-based, we can kind of like take our time and think of our strategy. I want to obviously reduce the distance here. I'm going to try and do Menacing Stare, which if we look at Menacing Stare, stare down a near opponent and send them fleeing in terror. Cool down 45 seconds, or 45 turns, excuse me. So I'm going to Menacing Stare this one. The glow white culture to Agulut, Agulgut becomes afraid. Good. Okay, that's what we want. So he will flee from me, which I think will give me time to Temporal Fugue. I... Made a copy of myself with the pole fugue. That's me right there. And now he is attacking one of these copies. So now I need to, I still have time. I'm gonna use clairvoyance so I can kind of see a little bit of, oh no, there's a third one. All right, this is bad. This is bad. Um, so we got more coming. How's that one looking? Which one is he attacking? Okay, so. Locked in psychic battle. That's the Sundermine working. <laughs> He's locked in a psychic battle with this, this cultist of Agolgut, and he is doing damage to him. I think what I got to do is I got to bail. I got to get the heck out of here. This is one of the risks that you can run into when you try to sprint to that place up there. You get a crap load of experience. It can like get you up to level four instantly, but you just gotta make it. So, okay, okay, we gotta think. We gotta think, we gotta get out of here. This is uh, this is a problem. There's another one coming. I was gonna teleport over there, and try and get away from these two, but now I think I'm just gonna toggle sprint and flee. Oh God. Well, we're about to see, I think, The character creation again. Okay, you know what? 
Okay, so. Okay, I, I barely got out of there. So I think I need to just bail. That is the correct thing here. I just gotta leave him. <laughs> I gotta bail on him. He's uh he's not long for this world. I have one HP as you can see up here. I am not doing good. How much damage is Sunder Mind doing to them? Injured? So these guys are probably killable by us. In fact, I'm gonna try. This is really risky. Oh no! My nose is beginning to bleed. I might be dead. Oh yeah, I'm bleeding. I'm dead, right? Yeah, this is how this game goes sometimes. Uh, I burrow a channel through the psychic aether to the glow-white cultus of Agulgut and begin to sunder her mind. But I fail to penetrate the cultist's mental defenses and then my nose begins to bleed. And then I think he tried to do the same and he failed. Oh, he killed that one, though. Right? I'm dead. Oh. Am I still bleeding? Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm just, I'm just gonna try and let my... Oh, I gained a level. He killed him! Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Do it! Hey, buddy. I think there's another one up there. You better be careful. So I don't see an enemy, so I can hit Tilda and rest, and there's the enemy. Oh god, there's still two of them. Yeah, we're just... He's gone! He disappeared! I'm out. See you later. Okay, it doesn't look like they follow me. I'm gonna rest. Okay. Woo! We're still lost, right? But hey, we survived. Our our temporal. What is this? What is what is this? Oh no! An Isakari raider. The Isakari nomad stands shrouded in robes, tattered in sun bleach. A kufia wrapped around his neck and face, protected against poison salt. There seems to be several of these boys, and then there is a dawn glider. This feathered serpent glides upon great leathery wings. The air about his colorful plumage shimmers with heat, and he leaves in his wake a blazing trail. That's not good. And what's this guy? This guy is on fire for some reason, <laughs> but he is an Issachar rifler. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got to get out of here. Can I? Yeah, see, this little effect here is the smoke to indicate that he is on fire. Can I leave? I can. All right, see you later. Oh, no. This is a... Oh, boy. We're lost again. We're lost again. Please. All right, we can get in my bearings. Woo! Ah! We made it. See, sometimes it's just that simple. Look how far I went. Now we're there. Oh, 1,500 experience. Level 3. Level 4. Yes. Now we're here. And we're level four. Woo! So we gained four levels. Easy levels. And there's some stuff here, but let's just go to our inventory and look at our character. We have you can see down here it tells us how many skill points we have, how many attribute points, attribute points, and then mutation points. So I'm going to dump my attribute my attribute point into willpower. Because willpower affects the cooldown of your skills, whether they be physical or mental. And I want to try and spam as much of these whiz biz abilities I have as possible. I also have five mutation points, which I can use four of them to get a new random muta mutation, or I can level up these things. And what I think what I want to do is probably level these up. To have this do a little bit more damage. So, right, right, okay. And leveling these ups is kind of like capped based on 
your level or your ego modifier. I'm not entirely sure yet, but let's level up all our offensive abilities. Our clone really helped us out, and this time I'll make two clones. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we'll level up our clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is important for us because we'll need to be able to see what's coming. And I only have two more. I don't need anything for teleportation just yet. So we'll save our mutation points for later. So are there any skills we want? Typically, I think cooking is like pretty dang important. Let's see, what do we have here? <laughs> so I could I could berate somebody. Now yeah, let's see, what a... Wait, eventually, I'm not entirely sure. We're still kind of early on. Still kind of early on. I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do in terms of like physicality with this character but you see there are a lot of skills like all kinds of stuff and they all do interesting things. some of this is uh from mods like i think the hand to hand tree is a mod um but this is one of those games that like the base game is great don't get me wrong but mods can really fine tune it to an amazing experience acrobatics nah these yellow ones are the ones I have skills in already. So do I want to this? I don't think I want to use this. I probably would. Oh, I know. Yeah, I'll get a Conatus. You may sprint for an additional 10 turns. That might be pretty helpful for us getting the heck out of dodge. Running away from things that are trying to get away. Especially since our speed is reduced by half because we have a big snake tail. Let's get this. So I, ch I exchange 150 points. You can see I have 36 left and I can't really buy anything. So Okay, so yeah. So now we are... Where the heck are we? We're in the... Uh, whatever this place is. What we got here? This is a town, so most people should be... Should be easy. This is a book binder. We have a protector of the stilt. Impossible. I'll never be able to kill that guy. Who's that? A mecha, uh, mechanimist preacher. Recites the canticles chromatic with rever reverberant. Re oh my god. Reverberant. Gusto. Gesturing emphatically with his hands. Oh, sometimes, you know, the brain just don't work that well. Ow! I stepped in thorns. Did not pay attention. That guy looks like me up there. Who's this guy? Disciple the Coil Lamb. I don't know much about this place because I don't come here. I only come here really to to like get some quick easy levels up. Otherwise, if you don't do this, you can just go like outside of Joppa and fight uh, glow pads and fish and then snap jaws. Uh, but I like, sometimes I like to do this. The shrine depicts a city of life from the ancient sultan Reshep. In one AR, closes the gates. In one AR, Reshep closes the gates to the tomb of the eaters, abdicated the throne, and dissolved the sultan in order to lift the curse of the guy. Wow. Look where we're learning. We're learning. But anyway, not too interested in this place. So here's the, here's the, the, the crappy thing about doing this. I kind of want to go back to Joppa now. <laughs> so... We have to go back. I'm hungry first. So let me eat. let me actually eat something. Keep it in escape. I'm just gonna make a camp. They 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 don't really care where you make a camp. Oh yeah, there's already a camp. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Sweet. Whip up a meal. A dawn glider feather. I don't know how I got that. Because I definitely ran from those things. Some lion-hearted ash and a nip of ash. Wow. It's a feather and two things of ash. What a meal. This guy looks hurt. Who's this? No, he's fine. An apple farmer. What may I call you, friend? My name is 
Uham Damaskamuth. Many thanks. All right. Do you have anything to trade? He has some stuff, but uh, we're not too interested. Although, now nah, we're not. Dang, cider sells for a lot. Wow. I'll have to remember that. All right, Selene, we're not interested in this place. One day. One day we will be. I want to get back to Joppa so we can kind of like show you guys the rope. And to be honest, in my like 10 hours of playing this, right? I have explored maybe this much. This much I feel comfortable with. I have no idea what's going on over here. I really don't even have an idea what's going on over here. Clearly. But let's fucking... Let, let's, let's head back for Joppa. Oh, I lost. Oh, my God. Okay, not a problem. That could be a problem. Regain my bearings. Yeah, suck it. I'm out. See you later. Okay. Oh, some ruins. Yeah, let's check out some ruins. But you gotta be careful, though. I've discovered Kamarad the Third. Real careful, though. So, one thing I like to do... Let's take a peek. Okay, so there... A wet glow pad, a disc of leaf with luminous veins. See how it says it's average and it's neutral. And then a wet glowfish. Luminous and flex flit beneath the water surface. D docile... Average neutral. These are kind of the things you kind of farm if you want to not sprint for... Oh, there's boots on the ground. Sprint for that place I was just at. Pass by some bark boots. Press G to get those bark boots. Not that I can wear them, but I can sell them. If I spend enough time here and I don't see anything too scary, I can hit O on zero on the number pad. And my guy will explore and go to everything of interest. He'll pick up... He'll pick up... Things on the ground. And he'll just try to, like, fill in the map. A little dangerous... Yeah, see, this is a little dangerous if there's something I don't see in the dark and my guy moves through it and never sees it, like a turret. You get blasted, you get turned to Swiss cheese. So, this little thing, like, literally tells you all the important information. Like, right now, I'm wading through a pool of 500 drams of salty water. It'll tell you if it's, like, really deep or... It tells you really everything. There's some bookcases here that we'll get to. I'm just doing a little use clairvoyance again to let's uh see right here. So far this is looking pretty dang safe. Alright, I'm gonna do like super cocky thing and let's uh this is a book. All the books are randomly generated. There's so much of them. I'm not gonna read these out to you guys. But I will get it, because I will sell it. And so now that I hit explore, I hit numpad zero, my guy's gonna move. <laughs> Between all these points of interest, he'll get everything on the ground. He'll go to these bookcases if there's something there. And, oh, what was that? I just saw numbers. What happened? The dragonfly is, a, should be a neutral, yeah. Big diaphanous wings bat the air as it drones in place. Who was fighting? Yeah, look at that. There's a signs of a, there's a signs of a fight. You can press F1. At any time when you're in this like look mode, which I, you press L to unlock it so you can do this. A glowfish corpse. Okay, so the dragonfly and the go, go, the glowfish fight? Maybe they don't like each other. Okay, let's get all these books. Us no more. <laughs> when you see an item and it says something like illuminated or painted, that typically just means that it sells for more and it has some like unique trait. Like engraved. Like this, this book sells for more than norm, usual. Because if you look, crisp pages of goatskin vellum are bound to a codex. Illuminated. This book is adorned with decorative marginalia and illustration. It's worth 30% more. Yeah, so stuff like that. So this will could be good fodder for us, uh, you know, buying. Maybe, maybe getting an artifact from a vendor. Okay, so my guy said there's nothing else on this map. So let's head out. Let's go back to the overman and you can see on this this map is like kind of confusing but i just realized literally yesterday that it's like what if i want to return to this return to that ruin for whatever reason like i had to leave but there were stairs down into a cave how can i ever how can i find it again 
Well, you see on this little map, there's this little triangle in the top right corner. And that shows you that in this square, there is something of interest. I'm pretty sure that might mean just a ruin, or it might just mean point of interest that you jotted down. So, it kind of helps and keeps track. But let's head back to Joppa. There's nothing to take. Oops, I hit space. What you need to do, uh, you hit minus on the numpad to go to this minimap. Then you hit plus to go to drill down to wherever you are on the minimap. And now we're here again. And I came here because I wanted to uh, sell some stuff, I think. Most of those books, for real. And then see uh, what this guy has to offer. But well, maybe we should try to learn a little bit about this guy. Tam the Droban Merchant. I am Kajur. Kajur, who are you? It is a pleasure, friend Kajur. I am Tam. Do you live here? Joppa is my home, yes. Once I walked the Magri like so many of my brethren, but upon meeting Elder Uradad, knew at once to settle down here. You will understand, friend, if you speak to him. What kind of creature are you? I am a dromad, friend, a salt strider. My people have walked the salt for thousands of years, meeting every creature that lives and thinks. You will not find better, more resourceful traders in all of Cud than we. Oh, interesting. Okay. Cool. Intruder's word. He has a lot of stuff. Oh, I need to equip my bow. Yeah, that's what I need to do. Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. So, look. Perfect. I uh, picked up a strange... We'll look we'll, we'll at that in a second. But let's see what... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't know tab. Sold all your items. Use the plus and minus keys to... Like, add and subtract things from the list. Well, let's just sell all these books. As far as I know, they don't have any value beyond lore. I could be wrong about that. You know, I could totally be wrong. <laughs> I don't think it's... I don't think there's anything like a Skyrim or Morrowind where you, like, pick it up and you read it. And you get, like, skill points or something. I don't think it works that, that way. Could be wrong, though. Uh, Fractured Microchip is used for tinkering. Which we kind of have a low intelligence. I don't know if we're going to be able to do tinkering. So I'll probably sell that, too. Excuse me. And so, yeah. So, we have a lot. We are offering 500 drams worth of value from those books. Woo! That's a lot. 500 drams of water is too much. We will never be able to hold that. So, it's kind of like... That much water would probably weigh more than all... Would uh, definitely... Definitely way more than the book. So let's see. What's this toolkit? Let's take a look at this. An array of tinkering utensils clang against tin, tweezers, a tiny hammer, pliers, inverted pliers, glass marbles, and three wrenches. This item increases the chance of recovering additional bits when you disassemble an artifact. Oh, that's a tinkering thing too, which my intelligence is kind of low. Our, our guy, I, I went for intelligence, kind of lowered it so I could. Uh, Spend more points in willpower. It's kind of like a give and take thing. Uh, if I if I die, I'll I'll show you that. But does this guy have anything we want? He has an iron mace that we could take, which I guess we have to, because we're gonna have a hard time making up the difference here. So we'll take this mace. It's a much better melee weapon than our engraved staff. And this uh, their inventory refreshes every so often too. He's got some pickles. Oh, pickles. I'm probably going to get these artifacts. We'll get a hat. We'll get a nice hat. How about that? Razor arrows. Probably cause bleeding or something. And here's an iron deflective van brace. What does this do? Minus two armor value, but plus three dodge value. Hmm. Probably, I have a low agility too, and agility, I, I probably should have explained this better, but I should probably focus on AV because I have a low agility. I don't think I have a very high chance of dodging anything, and I think that's affected by your agility. So we probably want just hard AV. We want more blue diamonds than empty circles. Uh, this leather armor, you would think that this would be like, oh yeah, maybe I should get this, but it has the same value as... A lot of your basic starting chests. So, like, my cloth robe has one armor value and zero dodge value, just like this leather armor. Doesn't necessarily make sense, but... 
And even with all that, that's only a value of 126 drams of water. We're having 500 drams. Just to show you guys, he's going to have 374 drams. Does he even have that much? He does not. He only has $130 on him. So, no. Let's 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 be smart about it. Let's not waste. Um, let's uh remove some of these books from the deal and let's try to make this a little bit more even. Yeah, this is getting a little better. So this has me right now offering him one dram for all this stuff, which I think is fine. I'll definitely take that. Pony up one dram of water. Yep, he can have it. And I got all this stuff. Okay, so first, I want to unequip my engraved staff, which you can see there has... Is that a range of three? I'm not entirely sure exactly what that arrow means. That arrow, the right arrow and three, I'm not sure what that means. Does it tell you here? No. But I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to go to... We're going to... Oh, I got a leather cap. I forgot. I'll equip that. Let's equip our engraved... Our, oh, no, an iron mace. 1d4. Why not? Does more damage. Equip. So now my clones, when I do make clones with Temporal Fugue, they'll have that Iron Mace as well. Let's also equip our short bow. And then uh, to reload your ranged weapon on this map, you just press R. And you see here it says in the bottom, you reload the short bow with a wooden arrow. And now anytime I can press F. And you might think um, that... You can't have like a melee weapon and a uh, range weapon equipped. It's a separate slot. So thankfully, you can still have like a melee weapon like at hand and easy to get. And then while having a short bow. Uh, so, oh yeah, and see like my cloth rope, same value as leather armor. So, okay. So now let's look at some of these artifacts. We have some artifacts. We have two... We have strange tubes, a puzzling artifact. So when you look at some of the artifact, you see here we have this option here, examine, which is the short key default for X. Let's hit that. I think I broke it. My character is kind of dumb. My character is kind of a big Dumbo. So, and your intelligence affects your, your likelihood to identify these artifacts so i think actually for this i'm not entirely sure i should be identifying these artifacts so i think there's a good chance they could break i should probably hang on to them until i can find some item like i believe there are like uh more advanced versions of that toolbox we saw that this guy was selling and uh they increase your chance to identify so we'll probably hold out for that let's make a quick meal though i'm kind of hungry Stop. Rummaging over your surroundings, you find these ingredients. A dram of fenugreek. I don't know what that is. A soybean. Literally just found it in the, off the ground. Some dragonfly thorax and a pinch of sheathed vanilla. All right. Nice. What a good meal. Excuse me. But remember that guy I told you about earlier that can give you a quest? This guy right here? Now that we have artifacts... Whether you identified them or not, and you should identify them beforehand, honestly, so you know what you're giving up, you can you can give him. So, like, I can give him. Look, I can give him the one we just broke. So, and same, that's free 75 experience. Ah, hmm, it appears you may be useful after all. Now go fetch me another trinket. All right. Guess what? Let's see if I can identify this time. What could this possibly be? Man, what is this? A metal folding chair. Wow! Oh, heck yeah, dude. It's a metal folding chair, dog. That's some real shit right there. Nice. Here, take it. It's a folding chair. 150 experience. Pretty easy experience. Because this is a pretty another pretty quick way to get some easy experience. This is a pro if you can do... These two quests, you can probably get to level two from, you know, level one. If you're lucky enough to get some artifacts in these free these free chests in these three houses that I'm circling on my mouse. There's always one here. 
There's always one here, and then there's always one here. You can see them kind of like right now on my mini-map because I already explored them. You just be sure to close the door behind you before you loot them. If you get artifacts there and you don't care about them, then you could all get some pretty quick exper experience there too. I hit level 5. 4 hit points, 62 skill points, and 2 mutation points. My genome enters an excited state. Would you like to spend 4 mutation points to buy a mutation before wrapping away? Yeah, sure. Let's see what we get. So this is like that thing where you can spend four to get a random. This is how it works. You get three choices. We have psychometry. You read the history of artifacts by touching them, learning what they do and how they are made. Unerring, identify artifacts up to complexity tier four. Learn how to construct identified artifacts, artifacts up to complexity tier two. Must have the appropriate tinker power. And I may open security doors by touching Touching. That seems really good because our guy is kind of dumb and, you know... He couldn't quite figure out that the first folding chair was a folding chair. It took two folding chairs for him to realize it was a folding chair. Or we could get corrosive gas generation. You release a burst of corrosive gas around yourself, which I release gas for three rounds, and it's on a cooldown of 40 rounds. Or ovipositor. Ov ovipositor? I think I pronounced that correctly. You can periodically lay eggs and spawn drones of yourself who will do your bidding. Following a three-month gestation period, you may lay eggs that develop into drones that take on aspects of yourself at the time they were laying. Um. Um. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We could um. We could become a chicken, lay eggs, or we get like I think that. <laughs> Although I'm really curious about Ovipositor, I think Psychometry is probably the best one here for us. So I'm going to take that one. I've gained the activated ability Psychometry. I have no physical mutations to rapidly advance. This is something I learned very recently too. Apparently when it talks about rapidly advancing, only physical mutations can be rapidly advanced. Which means just give, which means they get like three levels instantly or something. Which is very handy. Oh, good, good. Quite impressive, Treasure Hunter. Maybe you're fit to poke around my workshop here. I've been watching another apprentice. So unfortunate what happened to Scref. What with a disembowelment at all. Take a seat there. Uh, uh, all right. Now let me explain. I'm on the cusp of a grand discovery. When I'm done assembling the weird wire conduit, you'll be able to speak to anyone from here to Kyphus. First, though, I'm going to need some copper wire, as much as you can find. At least 200 feet. You should be able to scavenge enough from the rust wells in nearby caves. All right. As you say, I'll go fetch. Sure. Great. Cool. Uh, okay. So, yeah, we got a new ability. F. Okay. Select an artifact. Sweet. So, let's, uh, let's do this one. Read history with psychometry. Boom. You flush with understanding the artifacts past and determined to be a box of crayons. Woo! Yeah! Woohoo! Oh my god, things are turning around for us. We got a box of crayons. A small box of wax crayons. I can draw with them. Let's what do you want to draw? A friend. What color do you want to draw with? My friend's going to be light blue. Select a direction. Boom. I draw a pretty picture. I did it. <laughs> I have a mod that increases the amount of dots. So I don't know if that's interfering with uh, the drawing the picture, but I might have to see that. So anyway, sweet. We did it. And it's gone. Okay, look. Our next artifact that we use red with psychometry was a freezing bronze longsword. Snap. But it needs a cell typically for these to work, as you can see there. So it, it's not powered up. Okay, cool, cool. Let's look at these other two. A poison gas grenade mark one times two. So we have two poison gas grenades and we've got a uh, freezing bronze longsword. 
interesting. And it does 1d3, which I think is less than our mace right now, which does 1d4. But if we get a cell in it, that might be that might not be too bad. And weapons have different properties too. So like um axes like focus kind of on like dismemberment, which is pretty good, and cleaving, which reduces armor value, which is really good. Uh swords, I forget what their crit thing is, and maces on crit like stun. And typically most weapons fall melee weapons fall into those three categories. Then you have a bunch of ranged weapons, of course. Okay, so we have an option. We have a choice. What I think I'm going to do is I'm not hungry. Uh, how's my weight doing? 95 out of 200 pounds. Sweet. Let's head. He, the copper wells he's talking about are these. Let's head that way. Boom. We're there. You could go screen by screen if you want to, but you don't have to. Oh, my God. Um. Okay. This is a snap jaw. Tussocks of fur dressed skin stretched over taut muscle. Upright he stands, but he looks ready to drop onto force. His snout snarls and his ears twitch. He barks, and his hyena tribesmen answer. This is a swarmer. And one of them's not really a problem, but there, there are a lot of them over here. And who's this one? This is, oh my god, this is Balufobu Ubu, the hulking Snapjaw gut spiller. Oh, he's loved by Snapjaws, obviously. He's a swarm alpha. He's hated by the villagers of Urza, disliked by the villagers of Maruk, and hated by urchins for disappearing. Oh, okay, so they they, they generate the, the history, right? So he's hated by the villagers of Urza for disproving a famous theorem. The Snapjaw. Disproved a theorem, these people. Disliked by the villagers of Maruk for disparaging a famous poet, and then hated by urchins for disparaging a famous poet as well. So this is part of that, that, that random generation of faction relations. Uh, there are so many factions, like the fish, birds, towns, actual, like, you know, groups of people, snapjaws, lizards, all the factions, baboons, gorillas, or maybe monkeys is better. Monkeys and gorillas. And they all have factions. They're all randomly generated at the start of the game. Uh, so, And this is part of that. So there is a quote-unquote legendary Snapjaw here. This is a named Snapjaw. This guy is some serious business. And then this red guy is a Snapjaw hunter. He has a bow. He has ranged attacks. This is scary. It says they're easy, but I don't think I can take on literally nine of these guys at a time 10 of them because there's one way over here 11 of them and then of course we have some some kudzu matted fronds sway in the air currents and speckle the ground with flakes of moisture sucked rust this is just some plant that likes to attack passerby so and then another thing another thing you have to keep in mind is there's so much in this game you really need to like look around when you're in a situation and formulate because you have time this is turn-based game, so you have time to think about this stuff, right? So, a Dreadroot. It's hostile, but it doesn't really attack you. What it does is every time you're near it, there's like a chance that it causes you to be temporarily scared of it. Uh, like one or two turns, you like run away from it, and you lose control of your character. Very dangerous. And last but not least, we have a Jilted Lover. Virtuous Siri Mal... Virtuous... Siri modeled with thorns reach for the warmth of a body. They hug the air in desperation. So this is a living, literal living vine that likes to grab out and hug people. And that's that's an average difficulty. So this vine is technically a, a tougher fight than a single snapjaw. But there's so many snapjaws. Holy crap. So many. So what do we have here? Um... We got a bail. I can easily deal with this one. If I move over here. I strike him down. Snapjaw scavenger hits for one damage with his bite. He tries to bite me. And I smash him twice on the head for eight damage with my iron mace. And he dies. 
I don't want to do Temporal Fugue just yet. I want that to happen when we get into the thick of it. But well, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out... I'm going to go ahead and sunder the mind of this ranger here. A burrow channel through the psychic aether to the snapjaw hunter and begin to sunder his mind. He takes two damage and he takes three damage. And then he dies. What? Huh? Did you see that? Oh, the kudzu. That was kudzu. Okay, he fought kudzu. I thought that concrete wall right there hit that uh, snap jaw. And that would have been like, oh, what? What? Huh? What's happening? What is that? Okay, so we have 43 turns before we can do Sunder Mine again. Really hope I need I need to get have some mutations to get some more offensive abilities. So let's wait. You can hit five on the numpad to like pass a turn. Oh oh I know. I can hit F. I can do some ranged attacks. Let's kill this guy. I missed. I hit the shell rock. What is happening? The kudzu. Oh, he's fighting kudzu. Oh, there's another hunter. I missed. I'm really bad. My agility's awful. He's gonna run from me. Um. Yikers. Uh, let's let's scare him away with menacing stare. Let's try to blaze. I can't hit anything. My my Julie saw. Oh, I think I hit him. I hit him for two damage, and now the snap jaw comes on top of me, and he's made the gravest mistake. Just imagine like a small dog wandering into a giant snake den. I'm gonna constrict him. I'm gonna take my body and wrap around him for a crap load of damage. I tighten my tail around him for 31 damage. Wow. That is a modded defect, by the way. It might not entirely be balanced. That's a lot of damage. 31 damage? Are you kidding me? Holy goodness. Uh, let's keep taking pot shots at this guy. What happened to that? Why did that catch on fire? The tree just caught on fire near us. I still have 21 turns before Sunder Mine comes. Let's do some clairvoyance. I want to see, where did that named guy go? Is he still over here? Yeah, he's still over there. That's good. I could try to sprint and I could try to run down this archer, but I don't think that's a good idea. That tree is destroyed. Oh, I hit him. Sweet. That was a crit shot. He's dead. Yeah, we gotta try and... They look like they're hunting the random plants. We'll do the same. Okay, this is good. I can kill him. Okay, I'm having... I've struggled a little bit to fight that plant. Oh, who's that? What is that? What is this? A snapjaw brute. That's not good. And a goat. So we got to deal with this brute. Um, I have Temporal Fugue up. But what I'm probably going to do... Let's wait for him to come. I'm going to try to squeeze the guts out of him. Wow. Nice. Very powerful skill. Clairvoyance is on 20 turn cooldown. Where'd that name guy go? Where's he running off to? That looks like the copper wire that we need. And there's a pair of boots and there's a chest over there too. Oh, there's two chests. Oh, who's that? A new, a new fighter. Who's this? A scrap clad hermit. The patchwork of burnt metal and rust-flaked rivets make a, gr make a gradient of new flesh across the hermit's body. His hair is knotted into a rat's nest and held high by a barrette of broken glass. He screams in a tongue of his own invention. Oh, cool. He's neutral to us. Maybe he's hostile to the, uh, the, the snapjaws. Snapjaws are kind of jerks. Well, he's fighting a goat right now. And those snapjaws are moving on him, dog. He died. The goat killed him. The goat killed him. Okay. Not too worried about this. I think it's time. Although I did. 
coming a little too close. I gotta teleport away. Okay. That big old area shows like you have a random chance. So I kind of just went kind of nowhere. <laughs> I literally went nowhere. Try to keep these num numbers under control because that's the most important thing. We don't want these. Oh, dang. I didn't know which copy I was. I went further into the pack. Oh, this is bad. Is this goat hostile to us? It's not. I have 4 HP. I have 2 HP. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> you can try to constrict this next one. I'm still alive somehow. I died. I was accidentally, I was accidentally killed by Kerjur. My copy killed me. Yikes. That's how it goes sometimes. Oh, so when you die, it gives you this kind of like post-mortem. Level 5, scored 6,000 points, 2,000 turns. You found one layer. The most advantage position was an iron mace. Whoa. And then he gives you like chronology and the final messages. Kajar hits you with a wooden arrow for two damn. <laughs> my clone friendly fired me. Friendly fired me. This is my temporal clone. Hey Amen. That's whiz biz though. That's how it goes, right? That's just how it goes. <laughs> Did he constrict me? No, I don't think so. No, I was constricted by him. No, I think he shot me. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that how it goes. Okay, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back, okay? Be right back. Listen to sweet, sweet menu music. I'll be right back, okay? All right, I'm back. Yep, you know, sometimes this caves of cood. It is. It is curb storm. It is. Hope I didn't miss your message. It is. Yeah, like if you're just now joining, you literally missed my last run. I just died. My character just died, and I was a wizard, and 
Through the use of time manipulation, I made two copies of myself. And we fought a bunch of snap jaws, which are like kind of kobolds, little goblins, kind of. And in the chaos, one of my time clones shot me in the back of the head with an arrow and killed me. Uh, you know? What can you do? What can you do? I think for the purposes, I think I'm going to try, I want to do the last character again. Oh, well, I guess I should. Let's do the last character again. No, 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 it's fine. No, I want to do the last character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do a wizard. My name's going to be... Uh, I didn't want to be... Yarok. Yarok. And, uh, yeah, we're going to do... We're just going to do this. So we're going to start Joppa. And I'm just going to try and quickly do the same thing because I want to, you know... Shoot up and level again. So, you remember we gotta we gotta follow her. We gotta find her. But let's first let's loot. Oh wow! Look at this, light bronze armor, same value as a cloak. Bunch of food, copper nugget, water skin. Sweet. Loot oh, loot this. Oh musket. That's interesting. Cloth gloves that don't literally. Literally don't do anything. Literally, you just wear them. Let's talk to her. Go ahead and get this quest to run for that place. And if you're going to try that way, I recommend... Oh, hey, look, we got an artifact. Small mossy tube. I recommend... Taking the starting class of Pilgrim, because you start off with Wayfaring. Which helps you travel on the map. Uh, Mehmet, my man, let's, uh, let's talk about, yeah, I'll take your job. Some robot talking about casting down your artifacts? No. Yo, what's up, dog? Yeah, hey, with him? Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, we got everything. Uh, we got a musket. That's, that's kind of interesting. We got some armor. We got a small mossy tube. So, yeah, let's try Anything else I need to do? Nothing else I need to do, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, oh, lost. Oh, no. Is this slime? What is this? What is this? Yeah, it's slime. There's a bunch of slime. Slime pools. What is that? In the corner, I see it. A giant amoeba. Massive, quivering, gelatinous slime. You barely perceive the outline of something inside. Yeah, well, what if I sunder its mind? You attempt to burrow a channel through the psychic aether and sunder the giant meme's mind, but the attack has no effect. He's... He doesn't think! I can't kill him! Yeah, I'm out of here. See you later. I'm not gonna fight something with no brain. I need to make a camp. I'm... I'm a little peckish. We use a dog thorn leaf, a cordial fractus thorn, a nip of lion hearted salt crack and larvae, and a pinch of ash. Wow. What a meal. Loon Crescent. What did I do? This is spooky. I swear, the first thing that I see, I'm probably out of here. We found some random ruins run wandering through the desert. Hello? The wind begins blowing a gentle breeze from the southwest. No. Oh, Jesus! It's a Isakari Raider! Man, he startled me. Good lord. Came out of nowhere. Yeah, well, Constrict. Yeah, this is all really powerful. I think he dropped a weird artifact. What else do you have? A bronze short sword? I'll take that. Is that bronze sh short sword? Same value. Okay, so there are enemies here. We gotta be careful. Hello? Player voice. I spy. Okay. A pool of something mysterious there on the ground. An empty, an empty room. 
Ow! What the? F a bloody seed sprout worm leaves swaddle its hundred segments and lash root matter squirms out of its tail end. Jesus! Does it have a brain? You know what? I'm gonna constrict it. Oh, I thought I died. I gained level two. Sweet. That's a very powerful move. I generally don't want to be in the mix, the fray. Oh wow, that's a big... What's in here? What is this? What kind of wall is this? A marble wall. Okay. Hello? What was that? Is that a rock? That's rubble. Okay. Why is that wall yellow purple? A graffitied from all this great expanse. Okay. I didn't mean to do that. This one's oh more graffiti. From the year of exposure to the and I don't know how to say who inhabit the river beneath Red Rock. Okay. We got some artists. Okay, man. Maybe this is just an art school. <gasps> What's that? Strange tubes. Hey, I want me some strange tubes. Oh, more strange tubes. Give me those tubes. And a chest. Steel air. What else? Strange furniture. And some more artifacts. And an iron battle axe. So wheat. Yeah, let's get all this. What's the statue? A shrine to Ushir, the Mabapa Pest. The shrine depicts the from the life of the ancient Sultan Ushir. At dusk, under an uncanny and aquamine sky, the people of Tamu saw an image on the horizon. It looked like a scroll bathed in aquamarine. It was Ushir, and after he came and left Tamu, the people built a monument to him, and thenceforth called him Scroll in Aquamarine. <laughs> okay. What a name. Hey, get a load of this guy. Scroll in Aquamarine over here. Another one. There's another statue. There's two statues. There's three statues. Wow, there's a lot of lore here. Curiat. In 5185 BR, Curiat appointed a corrupt administrator as minister of Azokish. She mandated association with arachnids. Its name, mandated association with arachnids. Oi, you better get over here and you better hang out with these spiders. I'm serious. Somewhere in the Sultan worshiping precinct of Subal, Usher had a dream that he was staring at one at one's own reflection, and for the rest of Usher's life, he always kept some glass hidden on his person. Nice. All right, we got another guy. This guy's so far away though. The thing about Sunder Mine with clairvoyance is as long as you have sight on them, you can Sunder their mind. So I'm gonna start I'm gonna start I'm gonna start burrowing a channel into his mind so I can start melting it. Ow! Ow! Oh! Hey. He's dead. Never stood a chance, poor guy. Okay, yeah, keep exploring. Another one. This one's a little closer. But I think he's far enough to where I can ex melt his mind to you. Melt it. Melt it! More power! Nice. Two bronze short swords. We'll take those. We're not rich like we were in our other game. With books. Wow, there's a lot of statues. While wandering around the icicle worshipping priest of too bad... Angster Circe stumbled upon a clan of fish performing a secret ritual. Because of his mirrored eyes, they accepted him into their fold and taught him their secrets. Wow. In 6828 BR, Utafa pillaged all of the miniature worshipping precinct of Tana. The miniature worshipping precinct of Tana, huh? Forcibly relocating the families of beetles and apes, she became known as the Tana Terror. Spooky. Oh, there's another guy here. Prepare to have your mind melted. 
Stop it. He died. Bronze sword sword. Sure, I'll take him. Keep exploring. On the anniversary of her great battle, a scribe found a babe with a philosophical inkwell in each hand outside her scriptorium. She and her fellow scribes adopted the babe and named him Curiad. Wow. In 2939, Ushir, scroll in Aquamarine, the Mabatha Pest, died of natural causes. He was 99 years old. Aw. Oh. Rest in peace. Near the location of Upper, the Jack Serdates was captured by bandits. He languished in captivity for five years, eventually escaping to Hakesh Cave. Anything else? Anything else here? Yo, you guys got anything else here? Stop. I want to know. What's over here? Okay, just checking. Just checking. Making sure it's all in the up and up. Oh, okay. There's no way to even get in there. Yeah. For normal men. Oops. Okay. Well. We didn't get in there either. But I can see what's in there. There's rubble. Nothing. Alright. Can we can we walk again? We can. Alright, here's our mad dash. Oh I'm lost. Okay. It's fine, it's not a problem. We'll just go in a straight line. It can't be that hard. Are oh, you getting my bearings? That's right. That's right, I do. Ah! Alright, it did it. Easy. Level three! Level four! And only 150 experience away from level five. Nice. So let's take a look at your character. I think... I think Konatus is still a pretty good early build because we're kind of squishy. We, uh, we, we need to run away from things. I'm going to take that again and then... Um, go to my carriage screen. And we need to level this stuff up. I mean, I could buy a random mutation for points, but I think it's more important to put points into this stuff. It needs to be better. We These are like, Sunder Mine is literally our only, it's it. It's our only like offensive ranged move. And we're a little squishy boy. <laughs> so we had to be careful. All right, we, we, we came, we saw, we're gone. Oh! Okay, sweet. All right, so let's see. We have a bunch of artifacts. Strange further. We got some strange tubes, dog. Boom. Folding chairs. Guess what? Hey, yo, dog. You ain't never gonna believe what I found out there in the wilderness. I found the cool... Look at this, man. What is this? These are strange tubes. Oh my goodness. Hey, you want another one? Take it. Whoop, 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 whoop. Let's take it. Okay. Oh, look. It's... So we have the same two that we had last time. Ovipositor, which, you know, we can lay eggs. Psychometry, which I think is pretty important for us. And then multiple arms, eight. You have three... Three extra sets of arms. 10% chance for each extra arm to deliver an additional melee attack whenever you make a melee attack. My god. My god. Uh, I really want to take that. I really do. But psychometry... It's just... Like, objectively, it's just the best option. I have no physical mutations, I know, I'm sorry. Yes, I'll go to the copper pits. This time, maybe my clone won't kill me. Because, I'm not going to do ranged weapons. Let's find out what this is. Strange furniture. You flush with understanding that determined to be a plastic tree. Oh, shit. For real? Fronds are splayed out in a waxy imitation of life. It looks hard and greasy up close, but as you back away, its edges burn into softness and performs the tree function. Wow. Nice. What about this one? Flush of understanding and determined to be a skulk injector. Okay, so this is so these are these injectors that you can, you know, stick to your body. They're kind of like potions. 
A slender metal tube used to deliver various tonics directly into the bloodstream. This is a skull conjector. Lasts for 1,000 to 1,200 rounds. Your movement speed is increased by 25% at night and underground, but reduced by 20% in the daylight. And you get plus 3 agility at night and underground, minus 3 in the daylight. You can see in the dark. You grow burrowing claws. You suffer double damage from light-based attacks. Wow. Okay. What about this one? A flaming bronze sword. Wow, we're kind of seeing some... Oh, does this have a... Does this have something? This one came with a cell, too. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah, Kim cell. Flaming bronze sword, huh? All right. Let's do it. Yeah, who cares about the Iron Battle Axe? We have a flaming bronze sword now. And yeah, miscellaneous vine cords. Probably gonna sell those. Probably gonna sell these plastic trees over here too, too to our our bro Tam. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me. Excuse me, guy. Excuse me. Stop following me. Nothing to see here. Uh, yeah, yo, let's trade Tam, my dog, my dude. Guess what? I don't want any of this. We're not doing this. Can't risk being in melee combat with clones that I'll shoot you in the back of the head. Just can't do it. Bronze sword sword, iron battle axe. Man, maybe I should have taken the eight arms. To be honest. I have a musket too. Dang, I... Those things are incredibly inaccurate. Ah, uh, I don't... I don't know. Oh, look. This plastic tree sells for nothing. All right. Oh, it did sell for a little. It's just barely anything. What does he have? Scaled leather boots. What's the difference in here? Scaled. This item grants a rate of 200 reputation with unshelled reptiles. Eh. Mirror shades? Light flex breaks themselves in the silver moat and rush back to their place of origin. The signifier becomes the signified. The simulcrum is realized. Plus one ego offers protection against visual flash effects. With mysterious strangers. I will absolutely take those if I could wear those. So. Yeah, I'll absolutely take these. Plus one ego? Sure. A weird artifact? I'm not super rich, so I have to be kind of careful. A sturdy steel katana? 1d10? What is this? Oh my goodness. That's better than our flaming sword. Woo! I've never seen that. I gotta get the katana, right? I mean, and I gotta get those cool, those cool spectacles. This item cannot break or crack, though it can still be destroyed. Wow. Yeah, let's sell stuff. Let's see if we can make this work. Take my skull conjector. Just kind of have to, unfortunately, because it's too expensive. 186 for me to get the glasses and the katana. And right now, I'm currently offering 78. I think I have nearly 100. I have 40 torches. I don't need 40 torches. I could probably sell that. Sell some of this. Try and even this out just a little bit. Still can't afford it. Literally, with all my torches, I can't afford it. I get, It looks like I can get, like, maybe one. Man. So, Ego's kind of like the... Kind of like the stat that dictates how powerful your wizard spells are. How can I make some money real quick to buy this? But a katana is a katana. A 1d10, that's literally the strongest melee weapon I've seen in the game. Granted, I don't have much experience in this game, right? I don't have much. But this is literally the strongest melee weapon I've ever seen. A 1d10. I've never seen anything higher than a 1d4, um, I think. Okay, so hang on. 
What if we remove this? And I want to see how much does a Kim sell? Same for, sell for two. This might sell. Let's check the price. I'm, I'm curious if this works. Let's see. Um, trade. How much does the flaming? Twenty six dollars. Not bad. Let's see if it sells for more or less. Because those stem cells are kind of rare. Twenty dollars. Five dollars. So yeah, it doesn't really make a difference. So okay, let's see how the numbers work out here really want that stuff that'd be really nice probably sell like 25 maybe 30 torches if we get into a dark area we're gonna want torches like in a cave or something so that so that so that you can find some books you know what i'm saying like holy crap this is the nearest library so the musket and the skulk injector the two nuggets, the plastic tree. That's really it. And we want the mirror shades and the sturdy steel katana. Holy crap. I think I barely afford this with two drams of, with literally like two things of water left, which is really dangerous. But it's a sick pair of shades and a katana. This is something we. Oh, yeah, we are, I mean, I have to do this, right? Can I even take this? Pony up 53 drams of water. Literally leaves me with one dram of water. I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. Let's do it. I have to. I have to. I've never seen it. I've never seen it before. I've never seen this. If I need to... I can sell some of these, too, to get some extra jam. So, th now, here's the thing I'm worried about. Did I just waste all my money? Because I have a beak. Oh, I didn't. Yes. It's two-handed. It's two-handed, which will be a problem in dark areas. But, look, we've got some six shades. thought I had a beak. Do I not have a beak? Yes, and we've got a sturdy steel katana and a cloth robe. Now I just need a freaking fedora. We'll be set. I'm so powerful. Thanks, Tam. You're a cool guy. Need something. A soybean, a berry, and a roaming diaphanous wing. Wow. This takes it three move speed for this day. Sweet. Okay, uh, you know, I'm just going to go... I'm going to read this just because I want the lore in my journal, just in case. In 3 AR, Rashef cleansed the marshlands of... Uh, yep, 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 we already know that one. Also, the, this is graffitied. What does this say? Who graffitied this? Next day, there was no blue in the... Heel? Okay. Um, Can I get some water? You guys have some water? I only have one dram. Oh, there's a chest over here. You have any... What can you tell me about Joppa? Yeah, I don't care too much about this. I suppose you got nothing for me, unfortunately. Okay, well, we can very quickly go get some stuff to sell. Like, very quickly. By heading for... What are my quests? Yeah, let's do the copper wire again. There were a bunch of... There's a bunch of stuff over here. It's very dark though okay we made a mistake there are hostiles nearby oh no oh that's oh, okay so this is actually the worst case scenario oh a baboon from atop his sunning ship boulder this small monkey peers at you with eyes full of curiosity two puffs of gray fur billow out from the other side of its face so, I was going to save it when we got there because I didn't think they would be over here, but here they are. Oh, and there's a slime there, too. Why? No. Why do you think Red Rock is called Red Rock? Well, it's because baboons live there and they pelt people with stones. So, here's what we got to do. 
I have to make some copies. Let them go at it. I'm going to sunder the mind of this one. He's dead. Okay, they're pretty weak. They're pretty weak. The only problem is there's typically a crap load of them. The giant amoeba hits me for two times for three damage with its slimy pseudopod. Ah! Dead. Easy. Okay. You see a baboon to the northwest, so you refrain. Right. Go get him. Go get him, Yarok. Yes. Okay. Still nighttime. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit my torch again. Man, if I had eight arms, this wouldn't be a problem. Oh, I should have taken the eight arms. I should have taken this extra six arms so I can hold a torch and a katana at the same time. If I make it camp, does that produce light? Can't cook with hostiles nearby. Still hostile nearby. Uh, I'm bailing. Oh, God, there's a baboon over there. There's multiple baboons. Oh, boy. Okay, okay, okay. It's nighttime. That's a problem. I can't see anything. That's spooky. That is some spooky stuff. Um, yeah, I can kill him. He's dead. We know for sure that there is another monkey over here because there's two monkeys. We see a rock coming from that one. We see a rock coming from down here. And temporal fugue is on 67 cooldown. So I got to use these trees to kind of like break the line of sight. Okay, he's like right there. I see you. Okay, a little worse than I even thought. Because that... is a shrewd baboon. Yeah, well... What do we have here? What can we do? I think the only thing we can do is freaking... RUN! The goats? I gotta use the goats. I need it to be daytime so I can see. What? Oh god. Gotta teleport out of there. The monkey over there. Oh, Jesus! Assault hopper, albino legs thrust its turgid thorax through the air. And what is that lizard? That's neutral. Okay, that's salmon. Ovoid spots, crimson and coral and citrine, run the course of his torso and head. He's docile. Sweet. Uh, let's, let's get out of here. The assault hopper becomes afraid. Thank God. I've got temporal fugue up too. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. This is overpowered, right? Die! Can I please rest? There's a baboon there. Can I attack the baboon? I died! I was beaten to death by a baboon! <laughs> oh! Dang it! That was, uh... My katana and glasses! No! 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 Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, the most advanced artifact in my position was a sturdy steel katana. That's so sad. That's so sad. A baboon beat me to death. Bit me to death. Oh, I tried to attack it with my torch. Oh, dang. See? Yeah, I forgot. I forgot. That's why it didn't die and was able to attack me, right? I might have had Sunder Mind on cooldown, too, and I might have one-shot him. Oh, and I could have Constricted as well. Yeah, we got to keep... We got to keep mindful of our options. All right, so I think I have that... 
that character. I kind of like that character. I think it has the potential to be really powerful. So I save that in my build library, but let's do a new character. So the base game has two options. You have a mutated human and a true kin. Uh, this Yitrians is a is a mod that I have. The uh, the the main difference between mutated human and true kin is the true kin essentially becomes cyborgs because they have access to cybernetics. And mutated humans are, you know, your espers and your walking like chimeras and stuff. I really like mutated humans. So what kind of care? You know what? Let's just do a random character. Let's um. Trukin, child of the deep. We have three toughness, eighteen strength, some willpower and ego, and we have an omni pass. Whatever the heck that means. Our name shall be Prishra. Prishra. You know, I sit here, I sit here and I look at the possibility of playing this character, and I just really want to make a wizard work. <laughs> I just want a wizard work. I wanted a wizard with cool glasses, some cool, cool shades, and a katana. I have to do it. I have to do it. We're doing this one again. Except, why did it randomly give me spontaneous combustion? Why does that sometimes, why does it sometimes do that? Okay, well, now you can see the, the creation. We're going to do a mutated human. And we are going to, let's see. Strength. We're not really a fighter, so I think 14 strength will allow us to equip most things. Kind of want, we don't want too little. I kind of like 15 agility, because, again, we're not really trying to get into melee fights right and like sunder mine and stuff doesn't have like a chance to hit it just hits uh we do need to be toughness because you know we keep dying i think probably like that intelligence not too important not too important. Well, ego is 18. I think that's a good starting point. And then I like going willpower because, okay, so, oh, I need to do this. Your strength core determines how effectively you penetrate your opponent's armor with melee attacks, how much damage your melee attacks do, and your ability to resist force movement and your carry capacity. Okay, cool. Agility is your determines your accuracy with both melee and ranged weapons and your ability to dodge attacks. That's kind of like why... In our build, we're kind of like more focusing stacking like armor value and less dodge. Because, you know, we have a minus one to our agility. Not awful, but not good either. Toughness, score determines your number of hit points and your hit point regeneration rate and your ability to resist poison and disease. Okay. And intelligence determines your score, number of skill points, and your ability to examine artifacts. So how many skill points you get per level when you level up and your ability to examine artifacts. But... As you've seen, if we can get psycho psychometry, we don't need that. Uh, willpower score modifies the cooldowns of your activated abilities and determines your ability to resist mental attacks and modifies your hit point regeneration rate. Oh, see? So, I mean, that's kind of helpful. And then ego determines the potency of your mental mutations, your ability to haggle with merchants, and your ability to dominate the wills of other living creatures. So you might be wondering, like, why? Why? Why low ego and high willpower? Well, while this will increase the punch of your spells, right? I think it's just better to try and do those spells as often as possible. So that's why I like to literally dump as many points as I can into willpower, right? So, um,. I think this is a pretty good starting build for a non-melee character that might not die, but honestly, this game's pretty freaking lethal. So, any character can die at any time. So, but this time, if this character dies, we'll try something else. We'll do like a, maybe a melee character, or we'll do random. 
to random could be fun. But anyway, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. This time it won't happen. So physical, this is where you choose stuff like your physical mutations. Oh, you have a bun loader? And they're based off points. So you have 12 points starting off. And if you see this little square here is how much the mutation costs. So to get the benefit of having acidic blood, it would take two of my 12 points. And you get the benefit. And these morphites, I wouldn't worry too much about them. These like have some effects. So the chimera morphite restricts your mutations to just physical ones. And the esper one restricts your mutations to just mental ones. That including that includes defects and they lock you out of the other so like if you took esper you couldn't get physical defects like here to get you more mental abilities if you chose chimera you couldn't take mental defects uh you know to get more points for that so i typically i leave that alone for this build i kind of have in mind I uh, know Esper would be really nice. There, uh, the reason I don't get for it is there's a physical defect that is through a mod, so it's kind of hard to say how balanced it is. But that snake tail, right? This is a minus six value defect. It probably needs to be nerfed to like four or something. But I have no feet and a large muscular tail. Your move speed is reduced by half, and I can constrict my enemies to apply damage and hold them in place. And I can't wear shoes. Well, that constrict does a crap load of damage. Like, you saw me, like, blow up that salt hopper. He mega died, and it gives me, like, six points. So I, I usually take that. And there's some interesting physical mutations you could take, but we're trying to make a mage, so... I try to think about the package to keep us alive. And I think, after I've done a little bit of, like, studying stuff, clairvoyance, good... For starting off, chirokinesis and disintegration. I haven't done enough testing with to see if they're pretty, if they're good or not. Ego projection is pretty good, but we can hopefully get that later. You know, focus psi, focus your channel into psionic abilities. You have ability to focus on your magic power effects. Anyone will allow you to gather psionic energy into charges, which can be used by other psionic abilities. While focus psi is active, you will have a charging psi effect in your status. You generate psi charges equal to plus one, one plus your ego modifier per turn. Your maximum side charge is calculated by your ego modifier, level and toughness modifier. After charging your side energy, energy charges will decay in an amount determined by your willpower modifier. That costs zero. But I can't take it. That's probably a modded thing. Forest bubble could, could very well be a solid pick. But after messing around and stuff, the Sundermine, Teleportation, and Temporal Fugue is pretty good. And this leaves us with two points left over. I can't take this one. And the, the skill points left in terms of Mental Mutations aren't that great and you can only take one defect by the way you can't just like stack all these defects to get little start off with literally every ability but like a mental defect might include like narcolepsy blinking tip tick you teleport amnesia you know stuff like that quantum jitters your willful act sometimes dense space time whenever you use activate there's a small chance your focus slips and you dense space time in local region causing one to two space time vortices to appear this chance increases the longer you go without using an activated ability. Oh, it's nice. Snap. Snap. Evil twin. Acting on some inscrutable impulse, a parallel version of yourself travels through space and time to destroy you. Each time you embark on a new location, there's a small chance your evil twin has tracked you there and attempts to kill you. So spooky stuff. You metaphysical mutations. But these might, these might be uh, mods as well. Incorporeal form, the nine lives paradox. And then these hybrid. This one's... This one's definitely a mod. I don't know if this one is. But this one gives you bonus experience. And then this one right here... Is, is, is cursed. This is, this is a cursed mage build defect. This right here decreases your physical stats by 6. And increases your mental stats by 6. And man... It, and you have to like... Search for bodies. You have to find a different body to like... 
imprint on and it's tough it's tough i've tried a lot to make this work and it just doesn't doesn't want to we have two points left over uh let's see what we can get your face bears a sightly beak plus one ego that could be nice but we can't wear helmets no wait wait well we can it doesn't say we can't so we can get that and then fins swim faster lustrously feathered you get one dodge value cold resistance you see you can get stuff like multiple arms you can get hydra heads uh gills night vision oh, i might have to get night vision it's so nice not having to worry about night vision i think i have to get it i think i have to get night vision Yeah, let's do that. And then these are the starting like kind of class. Some of these are modded. Uh, some of the base game, you know, Apostle, plus two Ego, and you start off with these. The Arconaut, various stuff. The one that I like to go, oh, man, plus three willpower. Oof, be really good. Berate, Callus. If you want to, like, sprint for that settlement in the top left corner, you can start with the Pilgrim. Because it knows wayfaring. Excuse me. Maybe I should take Greybeard. Minus one strength. Plus three willpower. That would put us at 25. That's a lot of willpower. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I'm going to take this. Here's our boy. His name is Ujur. Let's start the game. We're going to go Joppa. And this time we're going to sprint. We're going to sprint. Let's hope this time we don't run into a bunch of monkeys. Okay, we got an artifact and a bronze helmet. Not bad. From that chest. Hey, old girl, tell me about that place. Sweet, thanks. Don't come in this house. Another helmet. Another weird artifact. A musket. Star Apple, Copper Nuggets, okay. We'll have some starting money thanks to these Copper Nuggets. Star Apple, Bronze Club, probably better than what we have. A Great Shield. Oh, that'll be good. We'll equip that too. Why not? Armor value. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, let me take these quests just because. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Go to Red Rock. Yep, sure, 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 sure. Yep, yep, yep. Find your stuff. Yeah, sure. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, let's um, take this one. I said, we're not too interested in dodge value, I don't think. Take that. They'll probably equip this too. Oh, I can't hold a torch. I have a shield. I have night vision. I have night vision. I have night vision. I see in the dark. I don't need torches. Oh my god, I'm so powerful. Never will I be hindered. Never. The idea is like on future, once we level up clairvoyance enough, you pretty much have full vision of the, like, whatever map you're on anyway, like permavision of the entire map, so you don't really need. Oh, I got stretch. Need a torch? Oh, but man. It's been a couple times, obviously, where I've I've been got by not having enough, you know, space. I don't have enough hands. I need more hands. I should have taken the hands. Had I found... Oh, you know, we can make all kinds of excuses. Oh, look, a backpack. Oh, this one gives heat and cold resistance, too. Wow. No wonder it's so much more expensive. We got a way of weapons. You any cool weapons? Of course not. Uh, sad. Sad. 
Uh, maybe someday we'll get a katana back. Someday in our cool glasses. Alright. Alright, you know the drill by now. I'm trying to... Yes. I will explore this lair. I discovered a lair of... Trintuscatres Lafitas Legendary Glowfish. Oh, that shouldn't be a problem. He's a uh, glowfish or neutral, right? Yeah. Cool. We can run out of here and see what's up. Yo, what's up, my homies? How's it going? How you fish doing? You hanging out? Don't know which one of these is the legendary one. Just look for a discolored one. Could be that purple one. Oh, this stairs going down here. Interesting. Let's keep that in mind. Let's go. Let's run for the uh, the settlement. Oh, cool. A vine shawl we've taunt. Oh, this is good. Yeah, give me that. And why not? It doesn't do anything. I should probably buy nine bother equipment and just sell it. Do you want to put a shawl on? Why not? Okay, I think that's about it. What are you still trying to find? Yeah, he's still trying to uncover that. Okay. Hey, yo, uh, homies, I hope you don't mind if I... Oh, there's already a campfire. That's right. Yeah, let's head there. I was about to set a tree on fire to make a camp. I'm hungry. Some etched bulgur, a smidgen of brass trash, and a corroded circuit board. What a meal. My God. All right, so we're going to come back there, and we're going to explore. We're going to explore. Um... Yeah, look at that night vision kicking in. Don't even have a torch equipped. Look how far I can see in the dark. Just in time for this guy to show up. Don't do it, huh, bro. 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 Yo, stay back. Stay back. Ah, I'm trying to sunder his mind. He's stabbing me. I blocked it. Eat that. And he's dead. Fool. Fool. Uh, he nearly, I mean, honestly, you know, he nearly killed me. Let right, him out. Oh. Some ruins. Okay, sure. I'll take a look. I'm, I discovered the gold dam repad. Let's do some clairvoyance to get a little peek over here. We gotta be careful here. I don't want to explore just yet until... I can confirm if this is largely a safe area. So far it seems pretty safe. There's also a way to, by the way, these abilities at the bottom. There's a way to assign those to a hotkey. I just haven't done it yet. I probably should. Let's explore surroundings. Okay, it doesn't seem to be too much here. Oh. As soon as I said it. Do I try to take on this dreaded... Very tough. No, we do not try to take this guy on. Uh, I'm going to teleport over here. See you later. In fact, I'm probably out of here. Probably gone. What the heck happened? Oh! Oh my god! I take 10 damage from Dawn Glider's flames. He emits a flaming ray. Take 1 damage from the fire. Take 1 damage from the fire. Yo, I'm out. There are hostiles nearby. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Don't target me! Uh, menacing stare! Be gone! He becomes afraid. Oh, he killed him! The power of teamwork. Rest. Okay. I'm out. I'm out. Some more runes. I will explore these. Iron terminal... Uzakish. But I probably will not... Although, wow, I can see 100 miles. 
I didn't see all kinds of stuff. I got vision for days. Let's just kind of circle the perimeter. We have clairvoyance too. Let's just take a peek over. Let me do that. You got to be careful with exploring. Was I on explore? I don't think I was on explore. But still, I just came around that corner and, you know, there's a... A dawn glider trying to light me up. Okay, this doesn't seem like anything. This just seems like ruins. Yeah, okay. Cool. Up, oh! And we made it. Level 5. Yes. Four-headed. Oh, okay, so look, these are different mutations. So we could be four-headed. You have four heads. Mental actions have 49% lower action cost, 7% chance per extra head initially, and each round to shake off a negative mental status effect. So that lower action cost, I'm pretty sure means like, in terms of like D&D &D 5e, it's like a a an action and a bonus action. If you lower the action cost, things creep closer to the bonus action. So it essentially just means you can do more things per turn. This makes my mental action, so like Sundermine, Teleport, all my Esper abilities, 50, nearly 50% 50 cheaper. Or I can get Disintegration, which is an Esper ability. You disintegrate nearby matter area, 7x7 seven seven, like square around myself, damage to non-structural objects, 1d10 plus 2, Damage to structural objects, 1d100 plus 20. You're exhausted for three rounds after using this power. Cooldown 75. Okay, so it's kind of like an AoE. It does kind of, it can do a lot of damage. It can do 3 to 12 damage. That's a, that's a solid amount. But the fact that you like, have to, you're exhausted for three rounds, it means you don't do anything for three turns before you can do it. And it also... This can really destroy walls, which can be helpful. And if you can think about it... Oh, this could be dangerous, actually. This could be really dangerous. If I have clones, and they use Disintegrate, will they harm me? Well, if they use Disintegrate, will they harm me? They might. Hmm. Well, anyway, our third option is a stinger. You bear a tail with a stinger that delivers paralyzing venom to your enemies. 20% chance on a melee attack to sting your opponent for 1d6 worth of damage. Stinger is a long blade and can only penetrate once. Always sting on a charge or lunge, which is a, a, a skill that you can learn. And some of the, like, um, charge is an axe skill, so you can learn in the, axe, uh, the axe skill tree. And lunge, I'm pretty sure, is the long sword skill that you can learn in the long sword uh, sword skill tree excuse me stinger applies venom on damage only 20 percent chance of stinger is your primary weapon and you may use sting activate ability to strike with your stinger and automatically hit and penetrate as a cooldown of 25 seconds and the venom paralyzes opponents for 1d3 plus one rounds oh wow i think the ob i think the thing here is it's either disintegration or four-headed Four-headed doesn't really help my cooldowns, but I could do multiple things per turn, right? Potentially. So that's like a clairvoyance teleport in a single turn kind of deal. Um, or temporal fugue and teleport. And... Something to think about, too. So, this said that my genome enters, enters an excited state. And excited states, you can boost your physical mutations by three levels automatically. So, this could... I could have this at, like, level four right after taking it. Or I could take disintegration. And my clones and I can become AoE bombs. This is a tough choice. Like, which one do I take? Disintegration, I think... It's like more power, more danger. Four-headed. Also, four-headed is nice in case you find an enemy that chops off your head. You have three others in this case. You won't be dead instantly. So 
So lower action costs are disintegration. We have level four four headed, so it could easily push it over. I don't think the mental actions things uh, percentage levels up on each level. I think it's just the chance per extra head to shake off a negative mental status effect. I'm probably going to take disintegration, but I got to go let my dog out, so I'll be right back. You know, got to go let the dog out. He got to go bathroom. I'll let the dog out. Okay, so four headed is probably the safe option. But you know, the content pick is disintegration. Gain the ability to use disintegration. Boom. And no physical mutations. Excuse me. Why is there a chrome period here? Why is there a chrome pyramid here? A mountainous pyramid of chrome hovers about you. The volume around it it appears furrowed somehow, and and sound only comes through its way through in waves. It's as though space and time themselves are crumpled away before this thing's very presence. These things are scary. Look at it. Look at the blue is doing. I'm out. I'm not. I'm not messing with this thing. I'm going back home. Specifically. Yeah, we can go back to Joppa. Any books? Man. Is there anything? Can I, can I rob these people? Thank God that pyramid does not give a crap about me. Can I rob you guys? He's blocked by canvas. Let's explore this area. Whoa, there's some colorful characters in here. What do we got? A turtle? Irritable tortoise and hired guard. The long length of time shaved and prospects of time shaved the prospects from beneath a reptile's feet until it hid until he hid in a shell of plastron and carapace, brooding and peevish. There is a turret here. There is a sightless way guy wearing simple robes, pulling visage is surprisingly calm given his surroundings. An ichor merchant. His apron is damp. With the sap of a thousand trees, his lips are painted in watercolor. He wrings ichor from his hair. A bat. There's a skunk. Everything near the bantam mammal is damp. Fur, hair, leaves, soil, slick, silver alloys. As if she's a furry world onto herself and the sweet, sickening, evaporated honey about her is her atmosphere. <laughs> There's two Arconauts. His cloak bulges around his waist where he stashes scrap on his belt. He doesn't look at you, but... He doesn't look at you, but two steps in front of you. 
It was a mechanist pilgrim, costume of humility, simple frock, ride brimmed hat, cerulean scarf, slouch back, and weary eyes. Wow, what the heck? Yo, what's up? What are you called, friend? You may call me Nemim. Oh, cool. Let's try, what do you got? Wow, he's got a lot of... He's got some, some bottles. Two tiny trinkets. Oh, you guys. Sometimes these guys have stuff on them. What's this guy's name? Tamushawoon. Cool, let's trade. Oh, strange tubes. I'll take those strange tubes. I know a guy who would love to have those strange tubes. You know what? Oh, I have a cloth in rope in my M toy. Did I equip a different armor? I don't even recall. What do I have equipped? Oh, that's right. Okay. There's no way I'll be able to steal anything in this room. You may call me Mushroomum. Let's trade. What do you got? What is this? Steel bread gland paste. Oh, that's something. That's food. We can't cook with anything like that, so it's pointless to us. Where are you going? What about you? I am Ujir, friend. What is your name? Ba Mushu much no longer. Wow. Let's trade. He has nothing to trade. What about you, good sir? I'm watching you, traveler. <laughs> what is your name? My name is Merle. Cool. Let's trade. He has another trade. Okay. So that's like an inn. <laughs> With quite some characters in it. Okay. Okay. Pig farm. Pig farm. She got some pigs. Any any uh, poorly guarded chests? You guys got doors? What the heck is this? Lulehart Hindren Pariah. Are you looking for work? Mm, yeah, I am. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. I am. Lovely. Take a seat. Chew the bark with me and I will tell you what I know. I've heard tell that my ancestral hometown, Bela, is in some kind of trouble. They've opened their borders for the first time I know of <clears throat> and are specifically seeking to hire kindred. That's their word for outsiders like you. Would you be willing to go and see what they need? Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, how do you know this? My water goes to scouts to keep a distant eye on Bela to make sure that it is still there, still safe. I have never been within a pair saying of my people's land, but I know exactly where the once hidden village stands. I will share this knowledge with you if you agree to consider whatever the request may be. Why don't you gather yourself? I am not welcome in Bela. My blood is not pure, and I was not born in the meadow. These things make my name as salt in the mouths of true Hindren. They are misguided, but they are my misguided family. They stagnate as cud changes around them. I worry. All right, I'll go. Bless you, friend. I feel better knowing that at least one kindred will reach back to aid my kin. They are on the cusp of a new fate, and I wish to see it while I yet live. Let me advise you of Bayal's location, and here is a little chew boon for your trouble. Thanks. Wow. You should gave me drugs. Yo, what's up, dog? Who are you? Warden's Esther. I don't care about talking about this. You got anything? Yo, dog, don't mind me. I'm just looking around, you know? Just your friendly passerby. Hey, what's up? An apothecary? What's your name? Shewer. Shewer. Sure, sure we you got nothing. What about you? A shoemaker. I don't, I, I don't do shoes. I can't have shoes. I ain't got no feet. Oh, here we go. Okay, what's... We got here. A glover? Okay. $300 artifact. Oh my goodness. What do you do? Oh, you sell data discs. What do these do? Something for tinkering? Okay. Let's explore the rest of this place and then uh, we'll head back. We gotta spill our, spend our skill points too.
Wow. Okay. Floor. That looks about everything. I don't doubt there's anything else. So let's, um... We need to be able to run away. Because, my God, I probably don't do it enough. Uh, oops, I hit the wrong button. Go here. Put a point in willpower. Put a point in clairvoyance. It's in your mind. Pearl fugue. Do not... Oh, dang. Oh, I spent four to get disintegration, so I had less. Okay. Oh, my goodness. The next rank of... It goes from 2d10 to 3d10. Wow. That's going to be scary. What if it's... I'm really nervous I'm going to wind up, like, killing myself. Literally. A, a, a different clone of me is going to kill me. Whip up a meal. Whip a meal. A smidge of abandoned dromad hair, an etched thread of Issachary banner, and a deserted donglide feather, a smidge of cursed Fulcree flake. This, man, I... Man, uh, Ujir. Hilly, whatever. So was that ruin down there that had uh, the stairs that we kind of want to go down? You're lost. Oh. It's okay, I've got night vision. I'm not even worried. Smile. I'm not even scared. I'm scared. Okay. Clairvoyance! Temporal Fugue! See ya. I gotta pat these flames out. Where you going? Dog? Okay, so only one person can... Sunder mine. He's dead. Good job. Easy. Easy. Maybe I should wait here to, uh... Have my temporal feud come back. 24 turns. Still don't see anything. Okay, three turns is fine though. Hello, have I regained my bearings yet? It's growing brighter. The night is coming to its inevitable end. Let's go to let's go to Joppa first. That, why, actually? Why do I want to go job? Oh, yeah, I want the experience for giving this guy some metal tubes. Sweet, a metal folding chair. Weird artifact. High explosive grenade. An acid grenade. Sweet. Let me guess, Tam. You're going to have some sweet stuff. Okay, nothing too great yet. Okay. A desert rifle? Wow. Okay, well, you know. That's not so bad, I suppose. We don't have much to offer him. Most of our weight is water. Should I try to buy armor, perhaps? Buy steel mask. That'd be the only thing worth buying. I don't think that's worth it. Probably just save my money. Yeah, yeah, I think I just saved my money. Okay. Give me that money. Give me eight drams. You let me know the next time you get a sick pair of shades and a katana, all right? All right, dog? All right, so let's give Argyle two of these. What's happening here? Argyle? Argive? What do you do? Who did he kill? Where's he going? What's going on? Archive? What? Okay. Take this metal folding chair. And then take... I think we're going to give him the acid grenade. Alright. I'm actually kind of sad that he uh, he came back. But it's nice to be able to lose chests. Okay, so... 
I guess it's time. Let us go. To these stairs. I discovered another layer. Legendary glow pad. What? Oh, there's an alligator in front of me. I was like, why did I stop? There's an alligator! Oh, excuse me, a crocodile! Her hoary cracked scales look like Mark Stone. Average hostile. Yeah, well, what if I... What are my weapons? I forget. Oops, sorry. I'm bronze skull. What if I... Okay, what if I... Um... Disintegrate! Try it. What happened? Let's see. The wet croc bit me twice. So took 18 damage from my disintegration. That's right. What is that? A wet prickler. A bulbous snag of a plant. Who's she about sharing their spines? Facing me aggressive feature quills. I just heard a door open. What is this? What is this in front of me? Brave master of the scythe strike away. This densely muscled wanderer stands with a disciplined and ready posture. She wears the iconic braces of their cast. Leather-bound wrappings with salt hopper sides protruding forward like jagged claws. The edges of each blade are tinted in red with the blood stains that mark the countless victories needed to be considered a master. Hello? Let's trade. You got nothing. You got wine. You got a lot of wine. Good dog. Yeah, the exclamation mark are those gray plants, the terror plants, like this one directly left to me. This dreadroot casting fear. There's stairs here too. Is this? Can't go near that. Maybe I will. Ah! I take nine damage from the quills. All right, see you later. Can I sunder your mind? Does the plane have a mind? Let me tell you. That right there proves that it does not. But you know what I can do? Disintegration! Wow, I, I blew up some walls. And I blew up that plant. That's right. You don't fuck with Uger. Back to exploring. Excuse me? Another one. Ah! What just happened? What did I reveal? What's happening here? A clockwork beetle and hired guard. A smacking of goat sized beetle with this striated onyx shell. There's sharp, persistent ticking emanating outward. The wet sewage eel and hired guard. Okay. Was oh, this guy hostile to me? Wet glow pad? What are you guys guarding? There's nothing here, dude. You guys, you beetles, are just guarding like... Oh, who's this? Ooh! Hello! Wet Iker Merchant. What's your name? Yearer. A leather apron. What is this? Do? Just a leather apron. He's got a bunch of glass markers. And some tiny trinkets. Wow. No, no. <laughs> Oh, you buddy. Wet Brave Master the Void Claw Way. Wow. Oh, dude, he has a metal folding chair. Congratulations. That's one of the most powerful items in the game. Dude, you are set. 
You don't even need... Ouch! Ouch! You jerk! A seed spinning vine, delicate viridian tendrils curl inward, and then spring open and loosen seeds at high speeds. You suck! Your dog, you let that just just let that sit in your house. Oh, there's much else here. There are stairs down here, but isn't this where you see a wet globe head to the northeast? Okay. I'm sorry, dude. Man, you oh man, he he comes at me furiously. But he can't get through my defense. How's my AV two? Don't I have a big shield on? Ugh. Locked in an epic melee battle with this glow pad. We're trading blows back and forth. Ooh, a critical hit. And he's dead. Watch out for all these dang... All these dang plants. Clairvoyance? Because that's nothing. So I'm, I'm curious. Oh, so there are two layers. Literally on top of each other. Okay. Uh, well, let's go here. Are they the same? Where did I go? This is a legendary glowfish. No, they're not the same. So now that I know there's stairs on here, there's somewhere on the map. They're over here. I see them. I can hit shift uh, greater than. And my guy will travel to the nearest stairs down. I'm going to eat something first before we do this. Whip of meal. A nice meal of a glowfish's face. A dram of witchwood and a glazed glowfish's face. Don't don't let these guys see the treat and fish, dude. Gotta be careful about that. You're not going to tell anyone, right? You're not going to tell anyone, take a hater, right? That I was eating fish at the fish place. You got the entry? You got the entry. And down we go. Oh, God. It's already happening. A seven by seven. Is that seven by seven? A one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Those are giant centipedes. We don't play games with giant centipedes. Okay, we're going to rest. Uh, probably a little bit longer, to be honest. Well, let's use clairvoyance. Well, let's take a quick look at our nearby surroundings. Okay, nothing over there. Let's uh, wait a few turns for disintegration to come back. Then, okay, there's a bunch of fish. What ghost perch? Dead light refracts through the rainwater and off its kaleidoscope scales. Color is attenuated, and all that's left is a white fin kelpie. Hmm. Neutral. Got to be careful. Don't want to aggro them with the disintegrate. One dream cider. Take that. Wait, it's not owned by me. Who is it? Who is it owned by? Let's close that door. I'm taking this. That's money, dog. Use clairvoyance again to get a little peek of uh, get an idea of what's in front of us. Okay. This is kind of like some narrow pathways. There's a dread root here. I'm just going to attack. You can force physical attack stuff with... Uh, uh, the button directly below black's backspace. I don't know if that's a backslash or a forward slash. It's a forward slash. Well, let's see what's on the other side of this door before we... Okay. Nothing. Too scary. Just some fish sitting out of water. There's the stairs down. Okay, we got some fighting over here. What's happening? Where are they fighting? Okay, I see evil kudzu over there. Yeah. 
and a chest and a bunch of dread wheat. Okay, that's a jilted lover, actually. It could be. Okay, he's dead. And a bunch of dread wheat. So, yeah, I just got scared. They just spooked me. What's in this chest? Steaded leather gloves and a bronze helmet. I will get all of this and I can equip those gloves. Whatever. 3AB. Okay, so this place doesn't seem too bad. What's over here? Nothing. Nothing. What about over here? Nothing. I'm about to hit explore, but I guess it'd be safest for me to... Yeah, see that first. You should find everything. Okay. Let's go down. Let's head to the nearest stairs down. Which are right there. And let's head down. Okay. Nothing. Ooh, some two artifacts and a book. Take all those. Clairvoyance. I'm really nervous. I kind of want to see what's on there we have to be careful because these are tight corridors and we're not exactly geared for melee we are wizards look at that look at that what is that what's that horrible creature oh, it's an eyeless crab this squat ivory crab has evolved a heightened sense of hearing in order to perceive its surroundings and the lightless nooks it inhabits yeah well Let's see if it can handle having its mind torn apart. Ah! He's dead. He could not. Spoiler. He was no match for my mental power. Clairvoyance. Thank you. Okay, we got some more fish. Not too many hostiles. That's good. Definitely don't want to make an enemy of these fish. I'd rather them be neutral. Another chest, too. Sweet. Camel bladder, some wooden arrows, some bandages. Bunch of fish. Yo, dogs. Yo, what's up, dog? What you doing? You hanging out? That's good. There's a lot of fish over here. Hey, y'all, what's happening? I take this. What is it? Six drams of cider, five drams of cider. Cider's pretty worthwhile. It's uh sells for a good bit. Will these fish hate me if I take this? I don't really want them to hate me. But if they do, I'm pretty sure. One, two, three, four, five. One, I'm pretty sure I could just blow them all up with disintegration, so. Yeah, what do y'all think about that? Alright, cool. Yeah, I'll take it. So, is there anything else here? That was a short little cave. Just a bunch of fish hanging out. Okay. Are there any stairs down? Would you like to walk the nearest? There are no stairs? Okay, we're done here. Let's go back up. Let's check the stairs for the other place, too. Go to the next stairs up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That wasn't too bad. And we're out. Great. Let's head back out. Then we plus here. And now that was Legend of Glowfish. So let's go to Glow Pads. Now, we haven't fully explored this place, right? So there's still some dangers lurking. But I think it's safe for us to just kind of auto path. We just have to be careful about those fronds. And I guess while I'm over here, let me. Oh my goodness. What is this? What is this monstrosity? What is it? It's a feral law. Standing taller than a snapdragon, three times as wide, the blossom of the feral law resembles the bundle of freshly severed saltback tongues. Its bouquet can only be described as sweaty animal. 
and its flabby leaves stand poised and ready to bludgeon anyone who dares to get close. Several thorny rhizome pods pulse near its base like a clutch of eager children. Oh, snap. Those are tough, too. Okay. Well, then my next question is, does it have a mind I can melt? It does not. He's far too powerful for me. There's nothing I can do. In fact, why am I taking damage? Is it because my attack's failing? Well, we know those guys exist. That's scary. Centipedes. Disintegrate! I leveled up. We leveled up. We have a lot of skill points, but I don't even I can't even begin to tell you what I think we should take. Prosolitize would be good to convince intelligent creatures to join me, but I don't I need more ego for that, so I can't do that yet. And right now, I think the most important thing we can do is we have more attribute points, which we don't. We only have one mutate point. The next rank doesn't increase the number of copies. It increases the number of rounds they last. Only four rounds, though. Could be pretty nice. Hmm. Maybe we save this. Do I save points for, uh, you know, hoping that... Is sound coming through? Is my OBS frozen? Am I still streaming? Let me check real quick. Okay. Did my... Yeah, okay. Sound is still coming through. Okay, there it is. It looked like OBS just lagged for a second. Okay, um... Do I level up these abilities? Or do I save? Offensively, we're pretty dang powerful. But the probably the I can't advance anything. My ego is kind of leveling these up as I increase my ego. Oh, I did it. I actually didn't mean to, but I did it. So, okay. Alright, well. I, I leveled up a temporal few. That's going to be so scary. If I do that. I really got to hope that... Um... Oh, what is that? Thirst thistle. Triangular leaves pant in the salt-sucked air, and the flowered angle just sharp thistles to thirsty attention. I think there's a ranged plant, too, so that's a problem. But we kind of have a plan of attack, because I can just go, like, right here and disintegrate. That only took out one. They're shooting now. This is bad. Temporal feud. You guys uh, take care of it. I don't have clan foins, so I can't see what's happening. They're getting him. What uh, what, what what weapon do I have equipped again? I forget. I have a bronze club. Take him out. Good job. See you later, buddy. Let's wait for, you know, I can do some clairvoyance stuff. Okay. Oh, we got some more free liquids. Which I will happily take. More cider? Yes, please. More cider? Yes, please. Oh, I'll just collect the liquid then. What was that? Nope, there's just an empty bucket. 
Empty bucket. Uh, okay, we're going over here. So vision, please. Look at there. All right, time to be disintegrated. Wow, that's a nice. That's a nice move. It's a. That's a nice move. Steel arrow, light bronze boots, a Borderlands revolver. Nice. We'll take that. <laughs> Excuse me. Now we can clairvoyance. Clairvoyance, we can prevent ourselves from getting... You know, we knew that those slimes were there. Oh, look, an Argonaut. Those guys should be friendly. Yo, what's up, dog? What's your name, man? Moo Moo Shum. Yo, dog, cool. Let's trade. What do you got? Engraved studded leather? Don't care about that. Well, yo, tell me what you think about this. I give you all my arrows. Actually, I don't need to. You don't have anything worth trading. I'm not gonna kill him. Cause, you know, he might be he might be secretly very powerful. <laughs> I don't wanna run that risk. I don't oh, what is that? What is that up there? What is that? What is this? A tumbling pod racing across the ground at alarming speed. The brittle rhizome pod digs into the dirt with its thorns as it seeks meaty vessels to explosively gith with its genetic material. Oh. Oh. What? Oh, it's moving. You better not come down this hallway. Yo, dog. I said stop. Don't do it. I'm, you're gonna make you're gonna make me disintegrate. I didn't want to do it, but I had to. Oh, it did nine damage to me from exploding. Did I get any experience with that? I can't even tell. There's so it, the log feels with like the uh, the details of me blowing stuff up. I got a weird artifact from the ground. Okay. Let's just go further in. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I ain't going over there without looking first. What's happening in here? Is that beetle friendly? It is. The glow pods are friendly. There's a spitting vine. So right oh, so right now only the plants, but we can't use... Can I sunder this plant's mine? It hasn't worked. That's not work. Oh, who's that beetle attacking? Kill that plant. Who's attacking? Okay, sweet. I think it was attacking the beetle. All right, beetle Chan, you do you, dog. You're gonna cut a bloody swath in this place here. Go for it. I found a bronze short short. I will take that. Up. Oh! Really don't want to use disintegrate. There's a lot of uh quote unquote friendlies in this area. Or at least neutrals. But you know, I mean like no, I can't stop them from doing it. Oh, they disappeared. Okay, maybe these aren't tough. Okay, they're not tough. What about you, though? Okay. It's kind of spooky. Okay. See a globe head to the west? Why? Why is he angry with me? You guys gonna make me disintegrate? I didn't want to do that. I didn't do anything. I didn't kill him. They're too powerful! Well, they can't attack me. They really can't move, so. I don't want to do this! You're making me do this! I've been splashed red with the blood of this glow pad. Oh my god, this glow pad's kind of tough. Good lord, man. Uh, am I bleeding? I am bleeding. 
Uh, staunch wounds. Can't staunch wounds with hostiles nearby. It's a plant. All right, we're gonna we're gonna begin meditating. That's another still skill you can learn. So when you have meditate, when you pass turns or rest your stuff, you like do it at an accelerated rate. How wounded is my opponent? He's injured. We're trading blows back and forth, and he, oh no, he's not dead. Oh my god. Man, we are we are locked in an epic battle. And he finally falls. I don't want that brackish blood. Yo, Beetle Chan, you good? Are we good? What is this? Uh, what is this? Is this water? Sugary water. Clean all your. Clean everything. I didn't even know there was a thing, to be honest. Sugary water. Bloody brackish sugary water. Probably not worth anything, right? Can't imagine. What's down here? What am I walking into? Jesus. Well. Ah! Oh, I exposed myself. I'm out. See you later. Let them deal with it. Good luck, Booger. I sure hope. Oh, oh, they killed him. Sweet. Why must we fight? He's so tough. I'm out of here. He can't hit me. Oh, there's still spitters over there. I'm just gonna rest right here. My uh, my temporal clones got obliterated apparently. Ugh, critical hit. You're lucky you don't have brains for me to roast. Otherwise, I would. Get him, boys. Ouch. Can he hit me from here? Cannot. Okay. I have to be careful about disintegrating. I need like pyrokinesis or something. Disintegrate. That's right. You can't see me again. I can wait in the safety. Thank God these are immobile immobile plants. That we're, you know, locked in almost desperate battle with. Jesus. Oh, that's a legendary glow pad. No, we care about this guy. I don't want to fight him. Disliked by antelopes. Disliked by robots. Loved by flowers. He's disliked by robots for giving one of their kind an unfavorable horoscope reading. And he's disliked by antelopes for eating all their fruit. He doesn't move. Yeah, whatever. Deal with my posse. I'm out. I gotta be careful. I'm teleporting. I can't sunder these people's minds. They don't have minds to sunder. Teleport fails. Try again. Why are you teleporting next to an enemy? Get him, Uj Oh, he's gone. This is getting dangerous. Disintegrating is causing problems. Yeah, I don't think I can fight him. I try to kill this guy. We're locked in an epic battle. Critical hit blocked. He's dazed. He's dead. Sweet. Okay. One less bad guy. Right over here. 
Look at all these dang plants. This place is lousy with plants. Ugh. Oh, yeah, man. And I can't use this. I gotta be careful using a disintegrate over there because I'm gonna destroy the statue in that wine gourd. <sighs> okay, I have to stop here. It is time for me to go. I have to eat dinner and, you know, prepare for tonight. I will be back. So until next time, as work permits, I will return. Good day. Hmm? Good day.